Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. I hope you're about to have a fantastic day. We are about to have a fantastic day as we're making a knife with only hand tools. Ridiculous idea, but I'm learning a lot and I believe it's gonna be something that I will be truly thrilled to have done. We ended last episode by putting a black oxide finish on this blade. We are now ready to make the handle and wouldn't you know it, I think we're gonna use Coca Bolo again. Man, it would be nice if I could use my bandsaw, but no, to the hand saws it is. We are making progress. We have that bad boy cut out. We have the very tip of our tang here cut off. There's no need for all of that to be there. We are now ready to bore a hole into our cocobello. Well, you remember how the title of this video is making a knife with hand tools? We actually are making a knife with hand tools. Oh, I put it in wrong. How does that fit? We actually are making a knife with hand tools. Right, so I think we're gonna start with a practice piece. That sounds pretty reasonable. We'll try and set it up a little bit how the other piece is. What I wanna be able to do is do two holes so that we use the drill to get out the bulk of the material. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make two marks. This is a quarter inch drill bit. I'm gonna make marks that are 100 and, oh, 60 thou, 160 thou down from the ends, which will mean that we don't go over our side to side no matter what, but it does mean that our holes are gonna be running into each other. So naturally that means that the tendency of, uh, of the drill bit is gonna be to wander into the other hole. It's been a while since I used one of these drills. In fact, I was probably like 10 the last time I used one of these. Been a while, we'll see how it goes. Well, more pressure needed. Let's see if we can get it to cut. Oh no, that's not good. Come on now, cut, 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 cut. Okay, now we're getting a chip from it. There we go. Okay, let's back it out. With these, you have to reverse it the whole way out because there's a little bit of like a lead thread here on the tip, which means you can't just pull it out. You have to reverse it, get past that, and then it's a little more easy to pull it out. So now we'll see if it's even possible to use this drill two holes that intersect. If I can, come on. So we'll start hole number two. Hopefully keep it nice and level, keep it nice and neat, and we'll see if it's up. It is not possible to do that. Not, no, no chance. No, okay, let's try it again. Ah, oh, maybe try a downwards angle. N nope, not a chance. Well, I think we can, uh, we can safely say that I've learned what I wanted to learn, and it's now time to move on to the real deal. I'm gonna lock that in the vise, use my calipers to find the center here. And it's now the moment of truth. Let's see if we can get this done. I guess like an intense music soundtrack doesn't work for this. Do, 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 Right, round hole completed. Wasn't that montage pretty good? I think the intense music worked. I think it worked. We now have a rectangular peg that needs to go in a round hole. We're gonna be using one of Black Dragon Forge's handle brooches. Thank you, Niels, for sending that out to me. I'm excited to see how this works. It's essentially like a saw blade that we can use to hog out a lot of material. I mean that with a little bit of elbow grease, t-shirts available now. We can get this rectangular tang in there with a nice tight fit. I'd like to do a good fit, a nice fit. That'd be very good, that'd be very, very good. Here we go. Hey, 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 guess what? Exciting news. We need to start again. Look at that. See how we got a bend in there? That thing is not going in the wood straight. And I think I should have left a little more thickness on the wood too. So this was a little edumacation 
It's now time to cut up another piece for attempt number two. Hey, I still have eight more attempts before this is more bad than the Chris Dagger. So, you know, I'm, I'm doing okay. We've, we've got another eight attempts. Check that out! We now have a long-handled, uh, long-handled hunting knife. It's for extra reach. Still needs to get cut off, obviously. But we have it pretty close to our final fit. Have a look at this. Right now, we've got about 10, 20 thou of gap. And it's nice and tight, too. That's hammered on. So the last little bit, I don't want to fiddle with it now because we're going to need to do cleaning up of the bolster area and cleaning up of the handle material to make sure that we get a nice no-gap fit. Now, however, what we're going to do is we're going to Describe out where we need to cut this coca bolo for our handle. You'll notice I left it a lot thicker than the last one. That's because, you know, frankly, the material is less expensive than having to start again because you have a mistake. This material gives me leeway to have a blade, to have a hole that's off center, and then still carve it into square around that. The mistake that I had on this is this was cut much closer to size because I was trying to be careful with material, and the result is that blade was off center, and it wouldn't have left us enough material for a nice little palm swell in the handle. So I'm very pleased, though it means we're wasting a lot of material, it means that uh, we don't have to start over again. We have a little more, a little more ability to fudge it into square, so to speak. One other little problem that we had on the last one that I forgot to mention is I made that hole too long. Now, if you ever think again about what an integral bolster is, this little flat spot right there, but it doesn't leave a lot of distance between our tang and the edge of the bolster. Which means that if our hole is too long, as we bring that handle material down, we're going to end up with a potential for having a gap in there formed by the long hole. We've now got a good fit, and the good fitting hole is 13.2 millimeters wide. The poor fitting one is 15.27 millimeters wide. That's like 110 thou. That's a big difference. And with the bolster itself only being 19.7 millimeter wide, it would have only left like a mil or a mil and a half of wood either side. It wouldn't have been strong, and it could have ended up really messing up the overall fit and finish. So I'm very pleased that we started again. So now it's on to the next step. What I'm going to do is I'm going to work out where that sits. We're going to scribe across it. Oh. Hang on a second, what is it that we're gonna do? Right, I'm gonna hammer this back on. We're gonna take a fine point sharpie. We're gonna look down it. And I'm gonna line up and see where the blade edge is. Make a little mark with the sharpie. So we've got a little sharpie line there. I'm now gonna go around the bolster itself, just so we know where the bolster is. Got a mark in the top of the middle of the bolster. And from there, I wanna see if we can make a little bit of a mark of the straightness of the blade, where the blade sits in relation to the handle. I think I'm just gonna have to sight this down. Follow the taper of the blade with a sharpie from both sides. There we go. So you can see, indeed, it is slightly off straight. Is it slightly off straight? Yeah, it's off straight to the actual material itself. So we're going to have to account for that when we cut down. So with that, we'll make some scribe lines that we can work to with a saw. Dogly dogly. Now let's do some sawing. Okie dokie, what a day that has been. Of course, PPE, super, super important, especially working with woods like this. A bunch of you have been commenting about how coca bolo is actually, a, you know, it's, it's very dangerous, the wood, while it is that you're working it. I don't know whether that's true. All I do know is the effort to put on a little safety gear sure is a lot easier than the effort of having a lung ripped out. So we want to save that. So I hope that if you guys are doing this, and I really hope you are doing this stuff, I hope you're getting out there and making making things and building things and being creative. It, it's just, you, you get so much joy from it. You learn so much. I hope you are getting out there and making things and I hope you stay safe while you're doing it. It's super important and there is no better way to keep enjoying making stuff than being alive. So you might as well stay alive. This is where we are on 
the handle so far. I'm going to keep it attached to this lump of wood as long as possible because it's going to make it very handy to be able to hold onto it in the vise without destroying the fine work that we're doing. We roughed it out with rasps after cutting it with the coping saw. Same coping saw that I service ground the blade on. And with that profile roughed out, it's time to start working on the sides. We're going to save that for tomorrow's video, however. So I very much hope that I see you on tomorrow's episode. I hope you hit subscribe if you're new so you can see more progress as to what it is that we're up to here in the workshop each day. And I hope that if you enjoy the content, you head on over to my merchandise website, alexsteelshop.com, and grab yourself a shirt like this, an It's Not Stupid If It Works shirt. Because let me tell you, it's not stupid if it works, unless it really is stupid. I mean, I, uh, the slogan, I don't know how well the slogan works. <laughs> but you can get that shirt. You can get yourself an elbow grease shirt, because this is what it's all about. It's all about putting in the elbow grease and learning from it. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for buying merch. Thank you very much. I can't wait to see you tomorrow. Share this journey with you. It's been a pleasure. Bye-bye.